Hello guys, my name is Peter Love of My Perseverance is your Candy Boss One. So thank you guys for your school awesome segment on the Perseverance Entertainment Network and Perseverance Network in general. We are talking to you guys about blindness.edu and basically I have a very interesting topic for you guys. It's something not only very important for creators, but it's also something very uh, very relatable to those with blindness visual impairment. Uh, so let's get right into it. So I want to talk to you guys about, you know, it, it's, it is kind of a barrier. So we, we're going to go over and we're going to search on YouTube. We're going to talk to you guys about YouTube. And the reason why we're going to talk to you guys about YouTube is because um, there's a major issue sometimes with YouTube videos. And I'm going to say this is that the YouTube videos um, of like some tutorials, some computerized tutorials, whatever it is that oh, there is, there are particular tutorials where they all they have is music and then the visuals are there and then they're typing out the information uh, without any audio. Now, let me tell you something, okay? And this is my personal preference. If you have a video and you're typing out the information of a step-by-step -step process of how to do this particular thing that you're showing a tutorial of. Why is it that 90% of the time this information is not in your description of your video but yet you typed it during the video? And the reason why I ask this is because if you're talking to someone like me who can't see the screen, who loves audio described uh, tutorials where someone is actively vocalizing where they're going and what they're doing. Um, we need this information in the description, you know, because they're, they're, you might have a fantastic uh, a video or a fantastic way of doing something, but if you don't have a way for those with blindness and visual merriment to consume your information, your video is not going to get very, very much anywhere. And this is, you know, and this is also like not even a blindness visual impairment thing. A lot of people consume their information via audio cues and audio recognition of people talking. So it's not only a blindness visual impairment thing, but it's also a very personal connection to the viewer. Um, but I want to talk about specifically is, you know, because they have, you know, these tutorials. And I'm not saying you're bad if you do them. What I'm saying is, is that you need to work on, you need to work on them. Like, let's say if you made a few of them. Uh, you have music and you're typing the, the tutorial, uh, things like that. If you're not going to vocalize, have as much information as possible in the video descriptions. Um, you know, otherwise, you know, for me, for blind visual impairment users, people are just going to gloss over your videos. They're going to hear the music. They're not going to hear any audio and they're just going to be like, OK, bye. This is not helping me. You know, so you're not you're going to lose less views. And then on top of that, people who have full vision who are looking for an audio tutorial, they're going to come to it and they're going to be like, well, crap, you know, I got to read everything and not to say that that's lazy, you know, oh my God, you know, I have to read everything. No, it's just some people consume information in a very audio based form. Um, so really to like look at your YouTube channels, um, you know, if you are making tutorials, you're really talking to people or it's a video about whatever it might be. Right. And, you know, it. it you want to make it as accessible as possible. And I would say that the biggest ways to make a YouTube channel accessible to those with blindness visual impairment is three different ways. One is your video descriptions. Two is being as verbal as possible within your video, talking about, you know, where you're going, what are you doing, uh, what websites you're going to, things like that. Um, and the third thing would ultimately be, um, really you know the the personal connection to a viewer is really giving them the opportunity to you know ask questions to have quick responses um because that is another thing that i've seen where you know where these types of uh tutorials have been typed out and then all of a sudden the person will respond please see video well sometimes it just doesn't work so you know i mean it, you really have to be a personal interactor to your community um to make sure that they understand what's going on because you know i mean we we all want to help each other right and these are very simple very easy things to do for a youtube channel um for any youtube creator and if someone tells me that they can't do it then they're in the wrong place because <laughs> i mean how hard is it like if you're doing a if you're doing a demonstration or something to be as descriptive as possible how hard is it to put it in the description 
how hard is it to respond to comments and give substantial information if needed to uh, if someone doesn't understand how difficult is that and some people are going to be like well it's very difficult it's time consuming well but that's what youtube is that's why you're there you love doing youtube right i mean that that is ultimately a question upon your passion do you enjoy it you know that's something i really need to bring up um is, is it's not only an accessibility thing but really if you don't want to like really hardcore get into youtube like you know like really being accessible is it really something that's passionate to you and i'm not saying that you should that, you know there should be a standard you know if it's not accessible then your channel should be deleted no but what i'm saying is is that these are very simple tactics that you could use that would still make your content accessible and you don't have to do much changes um you know it could, and like I said, you know, for, for instance, for videos with no um, auditory, you know, speaking, just put some text on the bottom. Hi, this is my steps. Hi, this is where I went. You know, this is how you do it. You just put some information in there. I mean, and I figure too, how dumb is it that view that the, the content creators will type the uh, particular, you know, step-by-step -step process because they're typing to you instead of talking to you in the video. They type it up. But then they never put it in the description. It's like it's already written up for you. You writ you wrote it up during the video. Put it in the video description, you know? And a lot of the times the the the, the content creators will put the actual website, www.com is where I'm going. Well great, put it in the description, you know? It's, it's, I mean I find it to be that that's it's important. Um, you know, and and really, you know, if you don't have any type of audio or you're you're typing everything out um even when i had more vision it just turned me off it just turned me off because i'm just like it's not that i'm lazy it's just that my me as a learner me as a viewer prefers audio and um you know if you're not going to provide audio at least provide some text that i could you know take and consume later or take and consume with a screen reader. Uh, there's all sorts of different ways that personally for me with blindness visual impairment, I can, you know, I can take care of, you know, navigating text and things like that. Um, one of the, one of the things you could also do too, is there is a part for like subtitles and things like that. Now, don't get me wrong, those who are listening who are blind or visually impaired. I'm not talking about putting subtitles on the video. Although that would be, uh, if you want to make an accessible video, I would definitely re recommend it for those for deaf and hard of hearing. Um, so what I'm talking about is that when you do um, the, uh, uh, when you do the uh, subtitles, I'm drawing blanks here, uh, you have to either A, you, let YouTube do it for you, which may or may not be good because <laughs> they kind of fail at times or you um or you put in your own subtitles at, at the parts of the video right what someone can do is they can actually navigate those subtitles through a subtitles bar instead of reading it through the um instead of reading it through the video and that is another way for not only people to view your content that way but also this stuff the the uh subtitles gets you discovered more because it gives your video more keywords to build off of so this is not only important for you know helping people but this can be a significant benefit to your overall success on youtube um it's definitely something i would definitely recommend um ultimately and and ultimately going from here um i do have a, a couple other thoughts uh, on different types of video. So let, let me talk about another type of video. And the videos are these where they have music in the background and then they have, um, they have a, a person speaking. Now, I appreciate music in the background. It's, it's very interesting. It sets a mood. It sets a very, you know, an atmosphere and things like that. But here's the problem is that so you really need to, as a content creator, test your video out as a viewer before you let it go go live so if you're gonna have like let's say if you're gonna have your uh vocals or you speaking at like 100 percent you the, those are going to be heard i would recommend that your music depending on what it is be at like 25 percent to your vocals at 100 and the reason why i say 25 is 25 percent is because that's typically what i use for my content 
Um, but I use lighter music. If you use something kind of heavier, like guitar or whatever it is, you know, when you're talking in the background, you may want to bump it down to more like 20% or something like that because it's still pretty loud with your background music. The reason why I'm saying this is because, guys, if you have an audio viewer um, or, you know, audio person who con- consumes content, if you have your vo- your vocals at 50, or I mean, if you have your vocals at 100 and then the uh, audio 50 to 75%, it gets hard to distinguish voices at times. Um, if you're intending it to be that way, then fine. But if you but if if you are intending people to consume the information and knowledge from your content and you have it like that, it's going to be very difficult. And if you're going to do that and that's kind of your style, then again, I would recommend put things in the description, put things in the subtitles notes, things like that. Put it in some shape or form that is accessible that, for instance, in my situation, I can go and consume in a different way than having to um, try to distinguish what you might be saying in the video. And it doesn't mean you're a horrible person or anything like that. I mean, let's say if you have, you know, any of these kind of types of videos out there that you're creating right now. It doesn't mean, oh, well, oh my God, you know, what do I do? You know, I've been a horrible person this whole time. No, um, we all learn. YouTube is, you know, social media, life, whatever. We don't start out knowing things. And that's why I'm making this particular show is because I'm informing people of these different things. So if you've been making these content these certain ways, um, you have to, um, you know, just go forward with trying to do better. You know, just, you know, if, just taking a look, you know, how do I do this? How do I do that? How to make it more accessible? Things like that. That's ultimately what we as the blindness visual impairment community ask for is continuous advancement and continuous tryings and efforts towards making things more accessible. Um, you know, so if you don't know how to do some of these things, I would definitely recommend, you know, just keep trying, just keep trying, put things in the notes, put things in the description. If they're not clear enough, try a different way, you know, cause some people might say that they're not clear enough, things like that. Um, just keep trying, just keep trying. Cause that's, it's, it's so important. It's so important to all viewers, but it's extremely important to those with blindness to visual impairment. Now, the last thing, um, the last thing I want to, I want to say is, um, for accessibility um you know accessibility on youtube is one of those really interesting things because like i said um we have audio you know and video and things like that and consumption right um so i would recommend you know like really when you're looking at channels um you know whether whether you be uh, a content creator or you happen to be a viewer um, I would recommend, you know, looking at many channels and then really looking at the ones that really connect with you, whether it be audio, video oriented. Like I have a lot of channels that I personally enjoy because they're very verbal, they're very fun. Uh, the tutorials, they're they, to say every steps and things like that. Um, you know, I, as a, as a, as a viewer, I'll start with, I, I find those channels. I subscribe to them. I'm very large supporters of them. I actively engage, I ask them questions. Uh, they know I exist, um, you know, so that's what I'd recommend as a viewer, as a cre- as a content creator, if you are looking to figure out how to make an accessible YouTube channel, um, I would definitely do this. So go on to YouTube and search out, you know, different types of tutorials and don't go by the numbers. Okay. Don't go by the highest numbers for videos. Cause that's not accurate. Okay, what you're going to look for is you're going to look for tutorials that have both a description that are auditory based and that are visual based. And you want to look at these tutorials and you want to see what, what are they doing right? How are they getting so many views? And then building off of that and modeling success. That is what I'd recommend as a content creator. Uh, are you going to be perfect at first? No. And no one's expecting you to be either. What I'm saying is just that you look at these, you evaluate some other channels and you really go from there. I mean, this is ultimately because people are going to be like, well, well, but that's like, you know, like obviously like taking someone else, and, you know, and, my, and um, 
looking at their success and then turning their success into your success. Well, that, that's that's really, I mean, it's, it, that's fair. That's legitimate. That's that's completely free. That's what you know. For instance, companies do. Companies will go and buy other companies' products, try them out, test them out, figure out why they're good or bad, and then they'll make their own. So that's modeling success. Is that, you know, is that fair? Yeah, it's fair. Mm -hmm. You put the video out there, it's public, anyone can view it. So um, that's what I'd recommend for you guys. But I, like I said, this is informative. You know, wanted to help you guys out as much as possible. And um, I think what, that's a good wrap up for this particular uh, episode of blindness.edu. So what I want you guys to do is if you are viewing this on YouTube, please like, favor to share or leave a comment uh, anywhere that this happens to be located at. I'm looking for you guys to feedback. Uh, if you are on YouTube, uh, subscribe because there's going to be more great kind of content coming out. I just don't want you to miss it. If you're listening to this on the Perseverance Entertainment Network, please let everybody know that this exists. Let them know that the Perseverance Entertainment Network exists. Uh, that you can view this via mobile. You can view this via desktop. You can view this many different places around the world. Um, but otherwise, guys, that is pretty much it. Thank you guys so very, very much for your continued support on these videos and on the channel and on the radio station. Remember, the perseverance is your key to the impossible. And we'll see you guys in future blindness.edu segments. <laughs>